Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to the Let's Play world and welcome back to the Westfall project. This project started off really strong, but I gotta be honest, I'm kind of burnt out of it at this point. So I thought for today's episode, I'm gonna do something else like watch grass grow. Yo, oh, look at that. Ah. Oh. Riveting, but I suppose I should be endeavoring into something a little bit meatier, and I can't see a better choice than working on my main base. This area is a monument to unfinished projects. Ever since I made this world back in 2015, I've been expanding and changing this base, and I just haven't gotten it done yet. You can see the overall vision. There are a bunch of different custom biomes that hold related farms and contraptions within them. Nether portal in the nether biome, crop farms in the farming biome, the dead biome is based around an iron golem farm, and well, that one isn't as directly related, but it still works. At least, it will work when I finally get it done. <sighs> when you've been stuck on these projects and this base for almost a decade, it can really start to feel stale and unmotivating. I've already planned out how I want to finish a lot of this stuff, but I don't know if I really want to. Part of it also is that there are a bunch of frustrating restraints that I'm going to have to deal with as a consequence of my lack of planning for this base. Like, for example, the Iron Golem farm was built way too close to the ground, and I'm realizing now that it's going to restrict how big I can make the buildings down here. Or how about the fact that I changed my beacon grid so certain things above ground have to move out of the way, chief among them being my nether wart farm which will have to be completely removed and rebuilt somewhere else. <sighs> all of this is to say that I'm kind of tired of it all, and maybe I really shouldn't work on my base today. In fact, maybe I shouldn't be on this world at all. Maybe I should have a fresh start on a brand new world. Welcome to the Let's Play Season 2, now in 1.20. And straight away here, I've got a plan. One thing that always bugged me in my old world was the fact that it took a journey to get to my end portal anytime I wanted to Enderman farm or end raid. So this time, I want my main base to be right by the end portal. And therein lies my first goal for today, I've got to find it. And in order to do that, I probably need to start by punching a tree. Later that same evening. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Mission accomplished. Uh, it looks like I don't have enough eyes, but that's perfectly fine. I'm not trying to end rush. I just wanted to find it. Okay, so it's been just about four hours since I first made the world, and most of that work I've put in so far was pretty standard stuff. The first hour involves some exploring, looting, and making a speedrunner's nether portal to start exploring the nether. Then the second hour involved mining, getting iron gear, and farming endermen in a warped forest, which turned out to be really effective. Hour three involved conquering another fortress, doing some more exploring, getting a horse, and making some fire resist potions to safely farm blazes. And after I was satisfied with 11 eyes of ender, I started my journey to find the nether portal at hour four. Sadly, this journey pointed towards the open sea and I couldn't take my horse with me. But this ocean turned out to be massive and wouldn't you have guessed, the stronghold was smack dab in the middle of it. After I'd gotten in, it took me about 20 minutes to explore the whole structure, light it up and find the portal. Which brings me to the next step here, because like I said, I only wanted to locate this thing so I can know where I'm going to be building my base. Well, it's located, and it's underneath a gigantic ocean, so that rules out a lot of the options I had in mind. Luckily though, I've had an idea for a boat design that I've wanted to do for years now, and this is a perfect time to do it. One of my favorite animated movies is Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas, and the ship that most of the film takes place on is called the Chimera this is what it looks like. I've always loved the design. It's colorful, sleek, and just fun. And that's what I'm gonna be building today. I spent the better part of two days in a creative world designing this thing, and I'm finally ready to build it, just as soon as I gather the materials. Okay, it's been a little over six hours since we last talked, and in that time, I've amassed all the materials necessary to build the Chimera. It took about as long as I was expecting to gather this stuff. I had to first explore around the world to find all the necessary biomes, and then, of course, the process of actually gathering them was slow too, since I was only using unenchanted iron tools. But all of that work was worth it, because now I'm ready to build an awesome starter base. My positioning here is right above the stronghold deep beneath the ocean. I don't have a plan yet for how I'm actually going to get down to the end portal, but I made sure to position myself a little ways away just so there's some wiggle room for when I eventually figure that part out. But yeah, the Chimera is gonna go right here and I'm very excited to get cracking on it, so you know the drill. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the show.
Oh man, this thing turned out incredible. I especially love the design for the sails. They kind of look like dragon wings and they're definitely the defining feature of the Chimera. When designing it, I primarily referenced this image here, which is a real concept sketch for the movie drawn by art director Seth Engstrom. Also a big shout out to Aaron Grundy who made a 3D digital model of the Chimera that I also used as a helpful reference. Both links down below. But I digress, this thing has a ton of cool details such as the spear hook jib boom, ornamental black candle tips for each mast, and the use of mud brick walls to make a sharp looking keel. I opted not to connect everything together the way they actually would be with ropes. I did try it out with iron bars and a few other blocks, but it always looked way too distracting, so I scrapped it. At the end of the day, if it looks cool, who cares, right? But anyways, let's hop aboard this thing, and the deck is fairly simple. I didn't want to overdo it, and I can always add in a few more details later. The concept sketch gave me some good clues as to how everything should be laid out, and I think I did a pretty faithful adaptation. My favorite place to sit is right at the wheel here. The viewing angle to the lower deck is just perfect, and it feels really authentic. I am noticing right now though that the area here is a little too plain, so I'm thinking maybe some mud bricks would break it up. Yeah, there we go, much better. But anyways, if I head on down here, I have three options. There's the captain's quarters, the crew's quarters, or I can go up. And if I do just that, check this out, I can actually get into the crow's nest here. All I need now is a spyglass. Oh, that was such a missed opportunity later. Next, if I head down to the cruise quarters, it's pretty empty. I did put together a neat little enchanting setup, and I thought it would be fun to do my first enchantment on camera. And hey, look at that. Efficiency four, unbreaking three. I'll take it. But yeah, I left the space down here empty because I didn't have any initial uses for it, and I figured it would be better to leave it blank in the meantime until a use arises. And that brings us to the last destination of this tour, which is, of course, the captain's quarters. I've got my storage here, crafting and smelting. No hidden ender chest yet, unfortunately, but hey, I got another portal. It's all pretty simple and practical, and that's exactly what I wanted from this starter Base. By the way, I also consolidated all my items that were scattered around the world from exploring, so I'm completely moved in here. And yeah, with that, my mission for today's episode is complete. The final tally came out to just about 14 hours of gameplay, and right now I'm on day 66. Not a bad start. By the way, these are my coordinates, and if anybody wants to follow along, I'll also go ahead and show off my seed. April Fool! You what? <laughs> Oh, I got you so good. You really thought I was just gonna abandon this world, didn't you? No, no shot. I love this world. It has its flaws and all, but I'm still 100% committed to working on it. And don't let me tell you that I'm burnt out of the Westfall project either, because that's a big fat lie too. On the contrary, I've actually got a really exciting next episode in the works, and I can't wait to finish that up for you guys. So if you're not already, make sure to subscribe, because you're not gonna want to miss out. But anyways, that's about it for this one. I just wanted to pull a fun little April Fool's prank. That new world was legit. It's not like I fabricated it, and I've got to say, that was actually a lot more fun than I was expecting. I'll leave a world download in the description in case anybody's interested or wants to build the Chimera for themselves. Let me know if I actually fooled you, and leave a like if you want to inflate my ego a bit. Thanks for watching, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.